Hello. Uh, so Tiki provides a very powerful and flexible database abstraction layer, thanks to a concrete example which expanded for three years. Uh, we have learned a lot. As we start a similar project, we have took the time to reflect on lessons learned, pitfalls to avoid, and why not share everything with us, wi with you. So. Uh, first, I described the context, what the project was about, how we did it, what the challenges were, and what we learned as uh, a summary. So, I'm Jean-Marc Lips. I discovered free software last century. Uh, I'm in the Tiki community since 2006. Uh, I live in Strasbourg. I'm alone in front of you, but I don't want to... I don't want to... Uh, I don't want you to believe that I did all that alone. It was a team project. Um, it was headed by Evolu Data, and a lot of people you know, helped. Some of them are in the room. Uh, the customers were uh, the peak team from Institut National de Santé Publique du Québec. Uh, the end users are medical testing laboratories. So that's the website. As you can see, everything is in French, but I'll, you know, translate as much as I can. And I try to, and I translated before I did the screenshots. It's a way of cheating. This is the team. It's quality control, actually. And what I do is that uh, every year they produce by medical samples. They ship them to registered labs. So peak ships and the labs have to register. They have to register because not all the labs do the same analysis. It depends on the machines they own. They have to be uh, certified for all the uh, analyses they can do, and so they have to choose them. Then they do the test and they send results, and PEAK analyzes the results, shares reports and recommendation, and this is what they called one campaign, and uh, there are many campaigns which are linked to group together with in sous program, etc. That's one of the processes. Um, they used to do that using faxes. So at first you think, hey, how hard is it to be better than fax? But actually, fax is hugely flexible. So, uh, for example, different medical disciplines were, did things for dif in different ways for totally valid reasons, so we had to adapt, and, but there were also clever pe people, so they also used that project in order to kind of streamline and make them, you know, their, their processes, so we met in the middle, everybody improved. And of course there are other processes, but I don't have time to explain everything, that's just an example, so yes, the, they also have every year to define, to draft, to review, approve, and publish the programs that the people can register afterwards and manage those registrations. So, and then that's the website. If you don't have an account and if you're not involved in the process, it does not match in it for you, even if you understand French. Um, so, what's in it is this is, for example, the example of uh, what I mentioned that's the management of the program. So they have all the interface they need. They can edit it. They can view it. Uh, they can go and edit the campaign which are linked to the sub-program. They can go to other pages. Um, there's a lot of it. Every table, as you can guess, is actually data linked to this program, but in other tables and sometimes in all other tables and other tables. So it's not simple. This is the that wasn't too hard. That's the process where they, you know, they approve, they discuss on it. That's just comments, and then they validate it when they agree together. Uh, this is actually the same sub-program, but that's the end user view. So we, we have that flexibility, and also uh, that's where they actually click when they want to register. As I said, they would, um, but you know, there are lots of variety. Uh, here is another program. They have plenty more campaign. You can click on them because it's not the time of the year when they register. So as I said, it's rather complex. Uh, how we did it? Uh, Tiki, in case you don't know, has 
plenty of features and you have to choose the ones you want for each project. So basically, we use the wiki pages in order to embed uh, widgets, which we call plugins, uh, in the wiki pages, and that's where the logic is. Well, you can also use them for documentation. Uh, we have file galleries. We don't use them a lot, um, but there are some documents to share. Trackers. Uh, is the huge thing. Uh, trackers is the ticky name for the database abstraction layer because it's starting at, it's starting, started as a bug tracker which grew and grew and grew and now it's a full-fledged uh, database abstraction but it's, you, it's hard to rename things after the fact. Each tracker item still has a status, open, pending, etc. and it, we use it. The categories are useful because that's um, what we use for, for the permission system. The scheduler, I'll get back to it, it will be simpler. Um, the, for, the performance related uh, features, uh, uh, the main one is that, uh, well, when you have a lot of data, the important thing is how you search and index it. And the default is uh, MySQL full text, but you really need to uh, install Elasticsearch for that. Well, we, we really had to because there are too many li limitations, especially in the number of fields that Elastic, uh, that uh, MySQL can do. And the rest are basically we had to raise everything, and it's easy to do because we do it within Tiki. It's just configurable, so all the time we double the some memory limits, etc. Um, so trackers. Trackers are uh, basically, uh, you can think about trackers as tables. Each tracker is a table. We have 86 of them so far and still growing. Um, this is the tracker admin view, which end users don't see, but the customers love it because they feel empowered, they can see what's going on, they can edit stuff. We have activated inline editing, so when you see that, you can click on any of those little widgets and edit what's there, correct typo, uh, filter on what you want to see, sort uh, on, on every column, etc. So uh, that goes out of, that allows to do a lot of things without bothering to set up a a whole workflow, and it's really useful. Um, so I said that uh, trackers are like tables, and tables have fields. So there are plenty of kind of fields, and these are also, you can just add them, etc. Uh, so the, the useful ones were the auto increment ones is really practical because it uh, allows to um, access and uh, display the item ID of each tracker item. Uh, item link, it's super uh, powerful. The item link, well, if you're familiar with SQL, think about uh, foreign keys. The, it the item link links to another tracker. So when you edit the item, you have a selection of items from the other tracker, and you can link track, uh, well, two trackers. You can link tracker items from one tracker to tracker items to another tracker. Once you manage to link those, uh, e items in this is super useful because it does the other thing. For example, as we said, this, these are the company. Each company is linked to one sous-program. And once it's linked to the sous-program, I mean, the sous-program has a year of the sous-program. So the company just gets the year from the associated uh, sous-program. You don't have to uh, do a double entry, etc. So you get those data. It's all indexed together. And when you display the company, you have all these, all the, all these values from other trackers. Um, so when you start to link trackers, uh, as you can guess, yeah, it starts to look like uh, you know a, a database schematic. That's that's a schematic I I did. Uh, by the way, in, in a tick, in a wiki page in a tiki page with the draw uh, widget, uh, I needed it to, for a workflow because otherwise I couldn't figure out what to do. And so this is. A, 
I linked every, all the item links and the item lists, and I put color because uh, the color is about the fact that um, uh, about the fact uh, that uh, when you link tracker items and you delete or change the status of a tracker island of a tracker item, uh, you may want the related tracker item to be also deleted or its status to change or not. That's configurable and that's why I wanted to keep track of it. Yeah, uh, still not uh, 86 trackers, that was, a, yeah. So uh, how we dealt with uh, source management? We had four, not, uh, three, not four environments. Uh, the, um, we set up a dedicated private GitLab uh, repo. We, have our, uh, we had our branches and we stuck dev and test on those branches. So uh, every commit would instantly update the site. Um, we get from one to the other by merging and cherry pick and production is not locked in production. When the staging environment we call test uh, is approved, we create a tag with the date and we run that in production. And so that means that, well, we have auditability about uh, and our versioning system tells us what we were running at what time, how it evolved, what we had in production at any given time, if we want to reproduce, if we want to recreate production at a former date, you know, when you hit a bug and you try to figure out is that a regression or is it something we missed last year and it was already there. Um, all our commits were very careful. We put that, we do not edit the Tiki files as much as we can. We add our, our templates in themes, in our theme, or in the custom uh, translation. That means that when we do a merge and we want uh, to get the novelties from the Tiki community code and the, and the security uh, improvements, we do not get much uh, conflicts. The database management is just the opposite uh, flow because the reference is in production. That's where we have the real data. Um, some of this data has been entered by end users. Some of it is those wiki pages we edit in order to um, I'll show you later why we have code in our wiki pages. So uh, the nice thing is that we can try that. Uh, we synchronize test and dev from that. Then we do experiments. Then we get that to be validated. And if it's OK, uh, that's the approved edit. And then we re-synchronize. Uh, Tiki takes care of keeping a history of changes in the wiki pages, in the tracker items. There's an activity log and that's how we got our auditability for that part. Um, I just said that uh, all our environments are running the same database. You may get how this is an issue. Uh, so. Uh, so what we do is that uh, one single file here is not uh, versioned. This one is specific to each Tiki. This, because this is the one which has the database credentials. And it also has a link to a um, configuration file, which can be versioned, because we have uh, an item for um, a section in the configuration file. That means that in the same configuration file, each environment uses another section. And in those sections, we can override any Tiki preference. This has two very big advantages. The first one is that all the security preferences and others can be set in that file and cannot be accidentally modified through the Tiki admin panel. The other is that we can have different things 
uh, in different sections and that allows us, for example, to ensure that only the production server can send email notifications. You do not want your end users to get notifications from a test server or a dev server they are not supposed to know about. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, yes, and you can change the browser title, you can change the theme options and end up uh, having your uh, browser tabs like this to have different colors when you are working in production or in staging or in dev and that avoids uh, big mistakes when you, you know, when you are editing a site. Well, you want to be sure that you're not editing prod when you want to do stuff in dev. Um, so uh, there's still the part about you know, how how you do that. Uh, so Tiki has a no-code, low-code approach, but at some stage you just have to accept that the project is really complex and, you know, and abundant. And, and the great thing is that there are options for doing really complicated stuff. And these are uh, basically the least widget which we call plugin because, you know, well, uh, the list the widget is, is super useful because that's what allows you to display stuff which come from anywhere in Tiki, but here we are only interested in the tracker items. Uh, list execute is very similar to list, but that's not for displaying, that's for listing stuff and doing things for on a whole bunch of tracker items at the same time, like deleting them or changing their status. Custom search is also closely related, and this is for allowing people to um, to do searches, to filter, to, you know, uh, the end user have control in this case. Um, so that's a list widget example. Uh, that's not going, you are not going to understand how it works like uh, we don't have the time. <laughs> we, we ourselves have, have that documentation page. We spent a lot of time. It's plenty of info. Every, everything is there. There are examples and all that. We spent a lot of time in it. Uh, basically, the, the general idea is that this is something we can put in a web page. Uh, there is a section which says what, which filters what we are going to display. There is a section about how we want to output it. The more, uh, there are predefined templates, but if we want full control, you just give a smart ETPL file, a file, and then you can, you know, code whatever you like. You can even change the formatting before it gets to the template. And if, you know, your filter doesn't match anything, there's an alternate in order to an alternate section. So that allows to do all the pages you saw uh, before. You have to realize that when I say you can do whatever you like in the template, one of the things you can do in the template is call another list plugin, the syntax being slightly different than from the web, the web page, and that allows you to, you know, uh, collect information to trackers which are linked to other trackers, etc. And you can go on and on and on and on if you like. There's no limit at this, this point. Um, so, that, so that's basically uh, what we used nearly all the time for all the pages for all the the, um, uh, the workflows. The scheduler is also really useful because sometimes some processes are just um, too complex. Uh, there are two special cases and all that. And we had especially like the scoring system. Uh, we just wrote a script which was directly doing the calculation and updating the values in the, in the database. And the scheduler is our way of ensuring that things can run, you know, uh, whenever you like. For example, by night, because luckily uh, neither our customers or the end users really wanted to work outside of working hours. So 
we can run everything we like uh, during the night, uh, especially nightly script for calculating scoring things or uh, index rebuilds, whatever. Um, so, what were the challenges? Um, one of the challenges we had was that page, because that page was, well, uh, that page was awesome because we had lots of information. It doesn't show here, but actually those columns have info related information which are in different trackers. So that's one of the cases where you have those those templates which call another list plugin, which call another list plugin, which call another list plugin. So obviously, the first year, everything was great, and you had everything here. We are using table sorter. You can, you can sort on any column. You can filter in these places, and you can move the pagination around. It was all uh, um, client-side, meaning all the data had been, you know, was in the page. And after the third year, it starts to get you Cloudflare timeouts. So we have uh, rewritten the templates in order to, you know, optimize to do some caching ourselves in the code. Um, and then we had to raise the memory limit because, you know, uh, trade-offs. Uh, but that's not... That's, uh, I mean, uh, that's not uh, a solution which is going to last forever. So it's solved for this year, and they want to have five years of data, I understand. We'll see that. Um, so basically, this will need to be rewritten using custom search and just paginate. Or here they have the download button because they want all those information in CSV so th that they can do more data mining. So we will provide, uh, we will rewrite that, uh, but let them uh, download subsets of the data. And that should solve that. And figure out, uh, I'll talk about ex uh, CBS, uh, CSV extract here. That was another issue we have. That's um, Every link here generates a CSV file, which, again, gets data from plenty of trackers. So for the big labs, we did have some timers. And we were about to do the same thing, you know, rewrite the optimize, the TPL, etc. But luckily, we had another idea, which is to talk with the customers who explain that, uh, well, that those data hardly ever change. So the solution is not to calculate them when you click on the button. We are just going to use some caching and have a nightly mechanism or, you know, generate the caches at the right time and just link to a file. Yeah. So mainly our lessons and improvements, meaning the, since I said that we are going to have a similar project which is about to start, we wanted to see what we, well, essentially it worked, the customers were happy, but we're, we can still improve stuff. So what we are going to improve is use more sophisticated Tiki permission mechanisms, uh, which is called templated groups. That's for the permissions about what people are allowed to see depending on the groups they are in. There are, we just used a simple way and then we had to clean to add an, another layer of security in the, temp, in the smarty templates. We want to avoid that in the new project. Make sure all layers of data are present in the design. Well, that's always hard because, uh, well, uh, it's always hard to realize that there is a missing table or tracker. It makes a lot, of, a lot of extra work to discover that too late. Then again, I'm totally convinced that it would be even worse if we were working in real SQL. Um, the other thing is, as I said, um, the other lesson is, well, table sorter is not a tool for data mining huge data sets. That's the summary of it. So you have to 
get your customers to accept that sometimes they have they have to use pagination and not have everything available and you know uh, there are technical limits uh, same thing for identifying huge CSVs and and also we have taken advantage of this we are going to improve the list plugin which will be expanded with sublist sub sections which basically will allow us to do joins without having to do that in TPL files and that's about it. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Uh, so.